Welcome everyone. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how you can interface MATLAB, Symbolink and Flight Gear very easily. There are not very many tutorials on how to do this online. So that is why I decided to make this video to help out everyone, especially those in the engineering field. So let's get started. So before I actually go on to MATLAB and actually show you how to interface the tools, I would like to first go over what Flight Gear is because some of you may not know this program and then I will move on to how to install it and how to configure Simulink and as well as how to run the simulation. So Flight Gear is an open source flight simulator. It's used by pilots, engineers, aerospace engineers, mechanical engineers and so on. It's also used by a lot of flight control engineers because Simulink is a major tool for the design and analysis of control systems. And Flight Gear is a tool for flight dynamic simulation is very popular. It's used by aerospace OEMs such as Boeing, Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman and so on. By NASA as well because NASA uses it for the rocket motion and for analyzing launch vehicle dynamics as well as other aerospace systems. It's also used quite extensively by the US Air Force because they are constantly developing new aircraft so they want to they want to try and simulate their dynamics in a very simple way, in a very quick way. So this is why they use flight gear quite extensively. It's also used by a lot of academic institutions, pilot training schools, because universities can very easily teach their students how to fly new airplanes, as well as they can give the students an appreciation of flight dynamics simulation because they can have the students design the control algorithm in Simulink and then actually visualize it on a real airplane in flight gear. And finally, it's also used by a lot of private industry for consulting work, pilot training, and so on. Sidegear is also a very alternative, a very good alternative to AGI STK. So some of you may not know what STK is. It's a very powerful simulation tool, but at the same time, it's quite expensive. The benefit of using Sidegear is that it is free, so it can be used at any time. You don't need a license for it. Everything within the game, including the scenery and so on, as well as downloading new airplanes, is all free. So that's a good thing about using Flight Gear. So now let's move on to installing Flight Gear. The first thing you want to do is go on to this link, which I have provided. It will be in the description. And you want to open this page here, the release notes. So in these notes, it tells you which version of MATLAB is compatible with which version of Flight Gear. So for example, R2015B is compatible with 3.2 and 3.4, but that means that R2015A will not be compatible with this, right? So you need to use the MATLAB version, sorry, the Flight Gear version, which is compatible with the MATLAB version which you have installed. So I have this one for an instance. So that means my version will be compatible with, with this version here. It will not be compatible with these two. So make sure you check that. And when you download Flight Gear, you have to go on this link, which will also be in the description. It's very easy to find. Just go on Flight Gear Download in Google search and it'll pop up. So it's available here. And if you scroll all the way down, that should see download older versions of Flight Gear. Now I believe that MATLAB R2016B, which is the newest version of MATLAB, it's compatible with this version here as well as 2016.1 right this one here is not is a newer version than 2016.1 so this may not be compatible with the latest MATLAB version out there so make sure you download the correct version which you can use and yeah so when you download and install flight gear it should be saved in these locations here by default so let me show you guys these locations very quickly. Your default location will be in your C program files folder and flight gear there. So it's going to be right here, right there, C program files flight gear. You will have all these folders here. If you want to save new airplanes, they will be saved in flight gear data aircraft so they should all be here and 
If you want to install scenery, it should be available in flight gear, data, and scenery. So it should all be there. Now when you install scenery, it will come in two subfolders, objects and terrain. You want to copy the objects folder in this main objects folder here. And you want to copy terrain to this folder here. So that's how you install scenery. It's quite straightforward. This link which I have provided, it will be down in the description below. You can download new airplanes from here. They have a whole list of them. They also have the space shuttle and a few rockets in there. So you can download them and you can install them to your aircraft folder which I showed you before. So now let's move on to the fun part. Linking, Simulink and Flight Gear. The first step you want to do is from your flight simulation model in Simulink, you want to include your states. Now states are merely positions such as X position, Y, height, and your angles of your airplane, so yaw, pitch, and roll. You want to obtain them from your flight simulation. So in my case, I have a simple lookup table. I actually defined my simulation in MATLAB and then I exported all these states in Simulink and then I used the lookup table to import them here. So here I have your X, my height. I don't have any motion in the Y plane, so I don't have any side slip and so on. So it is zero there. So I have these things here. I also have my angle set up. This angle is zero. The angles are right here. So it has pitch angle here, roll angle, yaw angle and so on. And I also have a simple moment causing block diagram here. This creates a small moment, a rolling motion, which is imported there. So, so that's how you basically import your angles and states. And you want to convert these states into your flight gear states. So flight gear works a little bit differently. It uses latitude, longitude, and height instead of simply X, Y, and Z coordinates. So what you do is you want to import your X, Y, and Z into this X, this X E block here. That's your latitude and longitude. So you want to import it there. And you want to include a reference height, right? So this height is your initial starting height. Now keep in mind that flight gear renders it negatively and then makes it positive. So what I'm, I mean is that if you want to start a thousand feet above sea level, you want to put negative 1000 here, not positive 1000 because this makes it positive 1000 after in your simulation. So you want to keep it as negative. And if I double click on this block, you can set your initial latitude and longitude coordinates. So that's your starting point where you want to start from and flight gear what it will do is that it will add your x and y to your latitude and longitude and your height will be added here and then it will export your latitude and longitude as well as your height so these are your states for translational motion for rotational motion you don't need any special conversion it will all be the same so as you can see in my simulation I have my x my, sorry, my roll pitch and yaw angle is going straight in the flight gear compiler. There is no conversion needed there. The next step is to set up your 6 degree of freedom animation, right? So any rigid body in space has 6 degrees of freedom. So as I said before, yaw, pitch, roll and your motion in X, Y and Z. So what you have to do for that is you need to, your Simulink library browser will have this block. It is called the Flight Gear Pre-Configured 6 Degree of Freedom Animation Block. So all your states which you have exported from your Simulink model, X, Y, Z, Yaw, Pitch, Roll, and when you convert them into your Flight Gear model, so Latitude, Longitude, Height, Yaw, Pitch, and Roll, they will all be fed into this block. And if you want to configure this block, you double click on it and it should take you to this thing here. Now if you're if you want to use the simulation on your own computer, you will need to put this as your IP address. It will be default. You can select the flight gear version in there. You can specify which destination port you want. So by default, it is always 5502. And your sample time is here. Your sample time dictates the time step for a simulation. You can make it anything you want. I just kept it for instance 1 over 150. Or you can make it more finer if you want. But keep in mind that the smaller you make it, it might lag. So 
Use your judgment there. The next step is to make a bat file. So a bat file is a Windows batch file. It tells your computer what to do from a command line perspective. So it will have this code here, which I have put. Now, it looks complicated, but it's very easy to understand. I have a link below here where you can go and it has a manual of about 150 pages long. It is made by students at the University of Cambridge in London and MIT in Boston. So it is an exchange program kind of thing. And they made this five year simulation there. So it has detailed explanation of what the software does, what types of airplanes it has, how you can fly a basic airplane and so on. So in this code, there are quite a few lines, but let me go over them one at a time. So your set FT root is your default installation flight gear. Your scenery is something you need because if you want to load your scenery in the game, you need to show, you need to tell the computer where the scenery is stored. So it'll be in set FG scenery, program files, five year scenery, and you also want to have a terrace sync. This loads the scenery easier, so you can specify that as well. So it'll all be here. And the next code, the next line of code you want to have is dot bin win64 FGFS. So I have a 64 bit OS, so you want 64 here. FGFS is just the default command line code aircraft. I have the NASA HL-20, but I made my own airplane here. So I, I made an airplane called the HL-21. So I just called it that and then I said FDM is equal to null. So what this means is that when I said FDM null, it will deactivate the inbuilt flight dynamics. So because the whole idea of flight gear is to simulate your own flight dynamics, which you have modeled in MATLAB and Simulink. So when you say FDM null, it will basically disable the inbuilt flight gear flight dynamics so you can view your simulation from only your MATLAB defined flight dynamics if you know what I mean, right? So if there will not be any conflict with the inbuilt flight motion, your motion will be totally defined within MATLAB and then exported into flight gear. So this will give a true feel to your simulation. The rest of the code is standard, you need that all the time. FDM socket in. It's all your your network and stuff. So I localhost I put because it'll be on my own computer. Fog disabled, this is more rendering options here. You can choose it, you can do anything you want. Your start date lat will be just be there. This is a default code you need you need that there. Code, I'm sorry. And you wanna have sound. So enable sound. Some airplanes don't have sound in them, but but at least for the ones that do, you can enable that and and hear the sound while your simulation is flying. Your visibility will be in meters, so this is 15 kilometers right now. You can make it more if you want, but keep in mind that if you make it too much, it might lag, so use your judgment. In air is in air, it'll be your starting position. Now, if you want the engines to start while you're flying, and keep in mind that you need the sound, you need the engines to start if you want to hear your sound, so you can say prop engines true. Some more code here, disable freeze, that's just by default, airport, Miami airport. Now this airport may not necessarily be the airport you want to go. So you can set this to a random airport and then you can reposition your aircraft. So what I mean is that if I said KMIA here, Miami airport, right? If I go onto my coordinates, it has X and Y here. And when you compile the simulation, it will not take you, it will initially take you to Miami airport. But then the moment you hit compile, it will take you to these coordinates. Now these coordinates correspond to Edwards Air Force Base in California. It's a major US Air Force installation. So these coordinates correspond to that Air Force Base and I pressed OK. So it should take you there. It'll snap from Miami to that airport there. So the coordinates which you set in your MATLAB, those will be your coordinates which you want to use. And some more stuff, a runway, this this will, so once again, this will all change when you compile your simulation. Now these values here, your heading, your offset, your azimuth. Azimuth is an angle, and your heading is your heading from north. So zero is north, and then it goes from there. Your offset distance is your offset distance from this coordinates. I would recommend make it zero, because you always want it zero. Because you want to define everything in MATLAB and not have flat gear interfere with that and this last code is default enable Rembrandt so you need that there so 
you need to copy this code and or you can type it yourself into a notepad file and then you need to save it in the same location where your flight gear is right so it has to be in the same location because otherwise it will not read the code so this bat file here I have this picture here it has everything in the same location so this is my m file this is where I define my simulation my ss functions m my test slx is just a test simulink model so I have these two simulink models and then the main idea is this so I saved my my bat file as run fg.bat so I have that here and you want them all to be in the same folder because when you compile it's going to read them all at the same time so that's what you need there so that's what you need there so when you have saved your bat file you want to go into MATLAB and you want to type in DOS run fg.bat so that's your command which opens flight gear and when you type it in it should open flight gear so I have it open here now it has not yet taken me to my location defined in MATLAB because I did not compile my code yet so the moment I compile the block it should take you there so it has changed location it has taken me to my coordinates here 34.54 36.0 north if you can see that so it's taken me there and if I press V it should take me to my camera view external camera now if, if I want to turn off the heads up display just press H so I have a small rocket here which I designed in CAD and I imported that into flight gear and now if I press play so it's fast forwarded there a little bit so let me hit stop and press play again so stop compile so now it's real time and you can see that my this display here shows my distance downrange and my height so my height's changing quite fast because I'm going straight up and now it should change my downrange as well so if I just click and drag I can change my camera and stuff so it, it works quite well if you see my pitch angle changing now I'm going straight and then I have a small rolling moment here which you can see there if I zoom in there is some motion there and that's it so that's it for flight gear and MATLAB I would like to take this time to thank a PhD graduate at Georgia Tech in the Department of Aerospace Engineering. His information will be down in the description box. He helped me connect MATLAB to Flight Gear and both of us generated ideas to connect scenery to your simulation. So thank you very much. I would also like to thank everyone for watching this video. I hope you learned a lot. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to send me a message on YouTube or leave a comment below and I will make sure I get back to you in a reasonable time period. So thank you for watching this video. I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.